features and trends. We will discuss about the features of the dynamic web pages and semantic web pages, its problem and the trends in ICT. Feature of Web 2.0 or dynamic web pages, taxonomy. This allows user to categorize information using freely chosen keywords. Some examples of these are hashtags like Twitter. May mga tweets na may similarity sa word na nagtatrend. And once you click that trend, lalabas din yung mga tweets na related to that word. Another example is TikTok na gumagamit din ng hashtag to group and categorize videos with the same word or hashtags. Another is yung paggamit ng ad sign sa Facebook kapag magtatag tayo ng kung sino mang entity, either page or tao sa Facebook. Rich user experience. Dynamic and responsive content to user's input. Meaning to say, the content of the web page are very interactive. Take a look at this example. The image on the left side is what I see on my newsfeed. The image on the right side is what others see on their newsfeed. Nasa parehas na page lang kami, which is yung newsfeed ng Facebook. Pero magkaiba kami ng nakikitang content. That's dynamic content. Look at the login form. Kapag nagkamali tayo ng nilagay na username or password, may lalabas na error message na mali yung nilagay natin. It's the web page being responsive. Tignan nyo din yung nasa reactions or comments. Kapag nag-react tayo, marerecord yung reactions at magre-reflect sa post. At manonotify din yung owner ng post sa reaction natin. User participation. The owner of the website is not the one who provides the input. Ito yung mga surveys, Google Forms, polls, reviews. Look at Mark Zuckerberg, the creator of Facebook. He just created a social network, pero sino ang nagpo-provide ng content? Mga Facebook users. Another example of this is yung mga forum sites like Cora, where many users can ask questions and other users ay mag-response sa question nila. Long tail. Services that are offered on demand rather than on one-time purchase. This is a concept on e-commerce na kung saan instead na ibebenta natin yung product in bulk o maramihan, ibebenta siya ng paunti-unti, lalo na kung in-demand yung item. Kasi bibili lang siya agad ng isang tao. And possible kapag binili ng isang tao, magkakaroon ng hoarding. Example of this is yung ginagawa ng Amazon. Yung mga in-demand products, binibenta lang nila piece per piece or one is to one sa bawat tao to avoid hoarding and other issues. Software as a service or SaaS. Users subscribe to a software only when needed rather than purchasing the item. Ito naman yung magsusubscribe tayo to avail some services like Spotify. Because we do not buy the product, we do not buy Spotify, we just need its service para makapag-stream tayo ng music. Dito din papasok yung mga sites na nagre-require ng membership to have an access. Mass participation. Diverse and unified information sharing through universal web access. Web content is based on people from various cultures. This just means na there are different cultures, different languages on the web, and some are might be incomprehensible to us. There's also things na sinasadya sa web like yung trending searches na nakabase sa location natin. We didn't ask for those searches, pero yun yung mga nalabas kasi yun yung trending sa lugar natin. Since Web 3.0 or semantic web pages are also dynamic web pages by extension, all of these features are also present sa semantic web pages. Problems in Web 3.0 or semantic web pages. Compatibility is a problem because there are a lot of browsers out there. Aside sa dami ng browser, meron din kanya-kanyang versions yung browser. And some functionalities may not work sa old version ng ibang browser. Like HTML5. Yung ibang attributes or tags ay possible hindi na mag-work sa first release ng Mosaic or Internet Explorer because HTML5 is the current version of HTML. Security and privacy. Security and privacy is always a problem no matter how big or famous the website is. There's a setting on social media sites where we can set our account to private or limit the audience of our post. Kapag ba nag-private tayo ng settings, does that mean we are really in private? The answer to that is we are in the World Wide Web. Once there, all of us online are subject to the public's eye. Privacy settings is really a matter of courtesy for each user. Vastness. As you can see, when we search a word online, 
napakadaming nalabas na results. And most of those results are not what we need. At hindi naman pwedeng i-check natin lahat ng results isa-isa dahil it would take time sa sobrang dami. Vagueness. It's due to the fact that napakaraming languages online. And when it comes to translation, certain words are imprecise. Hindi accurate yung pagkakatranslate at nagkakaiba na yung ibig sabihin niya. Logic. Logic is a problem because different web browsers and search engines have different algorithms. Take a look at the search on Google. Nag-search tayo ng example. Ang first result is the dictionary and the meaning ng word. Take a look at the Yahoo search. First result ay yung page ng Miriam Webster Dictionary. So magkaiba yung lumalabas sa kanya na result because of the algorithm that the search engine provides. Trends in ICT. These are the things that are currently ICT is in the most used of. Technological convergence or convergence. It is the synergy of technological advancement to work on a similar goal or task. Ito lang yung paggamit ng iba't ibang technology in accomplishing a task. Let's say, pinaggawa tayo ng essay about a certain topic. You need a device para mag-type. A laptop or phone. Next, you'll be needing a text editor or word processor. Maybe Microsoft Word or WPS Writer. And then web browser for you to search for references. And syempre, kailangan din natin ng internet para magka-access sa World Wide Web. So sa paggawa pa lang ng essay, we've used four technologies. Social media. It is a website or application that enables web users to create, discuss, modify, and exchange user-generated content. There are different kinds of social media, but most of the web applications today are hybrid, and we can easily categorize some of those iba't iba pang category. We have social networks, bookmarking sites, social news, media sharing, microblogging, and blogs and forums. Social networks. So our example is Facebook. In social networks, these are the kind of social media na ginagamit to communicate with other people with the same or mutual interest. Next is bookmarking sites. Bookmarking sites naman ay ginagamit natin to mark pages na may magagandang content for future references like Pinterest. Next is social news. Look at this inquirer.net. As of now, may estimate tayo na 73% ng population gumagamit ng smartphone. So itong mga network na to humahanap ng paraan pa paano makikita ng tao yung news. At dahil nga 73% ng population ang gumagamit ng smartphone, gumawa na sila ng mga web application or websites para ma-reach yung audience na yon. Look at Facebook. Ang Facebook ay pwede social news because there are news network na nasa Facebook and they're sharing the news on that platform. Media sharing. The best example of media sharing is YouTube but we can also have Facebook as well since nakakapag-share tayo ng content sa Facebook like images, text, and videos. Microblogging. Ito naman yung mga social media na nakakapag-share tayo ng mga mini update or maliliit na post lang kasi nga hindi naman lahat gusto magbasa ng mga habang post. And then we also have blogs and forums like yung Stack Overflow. Dito naman, pwede mag-post yung user ng question or ng topic and then magkakaroon ng discussion sa member ng application. Mobile technologies. These devices are capable to do tasks that were originally found in personal computers. There are two types of phones, basic and smartphone. Pero let's have it at least since may pinagkaiba ang feature at basic phone. Basic phone are used for calling and texting. Feature phone, ganun din. Pero may access na siya sa internet. And meron na siya mga games like snakes and then smartphones. Smartphones allows us to do tasks na originally from computer kasi nakakapag-install tayo dito ng software at applications. 4G network or LTE. It is currently the most used fastest mobile network. 5G is currently in the works. Fifth generation mobile network will allow us to have a faster network connection. It is believed na it's 100 times faster than 4G network. Different mobile operating system. As you can see, there's a lot of them. But let's just focus on four. First is WebOS. Ito yung OS na ginagamit sa mga smart TV ngayon kaya nakakakonek ang smart TV sa Wi-Fi and pwede siyang installan ng mga application. Next is Symbian OS. This was originally used by Nokia. At tinatawag din itong original smartphone OS. iOS. 
by Apple, which is, as we all know, the most expensive phone out there due to them having their own operating system and their high-quality products. Android. This is the most used operating system sa smartphones due to the fact that it's free and open source. This was developed by Google. Kaya most of the Android phone ay merong Google software. Assistive media. It is a non-profit service designed to help people who have visual and reading impairments. Obviously, these are the technology we use to help people with disability. Most common dito ay yung hearing aid, lapel, projector, and yung mga nakikita nyo pa dito. Storage. A lot of people now stores data digitally, either through the use of cloud or storage devices. Data can now be stored in a small device, like a PDF book can be stored in an SD card. Meron din tayong cloud storage like Google Drive, MediaPire, and Dropbox na pwede din paglagay ng files. So ang laking advantage ngayon ng storage kasi mas mali yun nakoconsume ng physical space. This question is not meant to be answered, but I'll drop it anyway. Do you think the internet is a trend in ICT? 